For sure, yeah. That was in 2020. Um, I did like the first ever finger flip in surfing at Waco and it was like a trick that I had been uh, dreaming of doing for like years. It honestly like kind of jump started my career. I was like a B list or C list pro surfer at that point. Like making no money and just doing it for fun and at that point it kind of just put me on the map during COVID like the WSL events weren't going on and nothing was going on so that clip went like extremely viral and just blew people's mind that you could do like a kickflip on a surfboard and um, it just like opened my mind to like so many more possibilities like progressing our sport. Before we get into today's video, I want to talk to you guys about Aura. Thank you Aura for sponsoring today's video. If you guys have ever been concerned or worried about all your personal info being leaked on the internet, then go to Aura.com slash Zeke for a free 14 day trial to be able to check if any of your data has been leaked or exposed. I'll pop it up right here. Basically Aura allows you to check all that personal info, any medical records, which I get a lot of any family information and all that jazz. So if you don't want any of your info being sold to data brokers and put on the dark web, then you should use Aura. I just had my filmer Jet sign up for it, free 14 day trial, and he's hyped. Stoked. Because he gets pretty uh, paranoid about all that jazz. So thank you Aura for sponsoring today's video. And don't forget guys, go to aura.com slash Zeke for a free 14 day trial. Sign up dude, it doesn't hurt. And you'll be stoked on the, on the outcome, so. Thank you, Aura. Click the link in the description down below. And uh, now, let's get into today's video. You! Woo! Looks good, YouTube. Just arrived to the boardroom show at the Del Mar Fairgrounds in San Diego, California. It's probably like one of the biggest trade shows slash, I don't even know what to call it, dude. It's a, it's a trade show. But it's like for the consumers, for the surfers, for the brands to basically show everybody what's going on. Um, it's gonna be an epic day, dude. I'm speaking at 11 with the head editor and founder of Wavepool Magazine, with Tom Lochtefeld, who's an amazing engineer for Wavepools, and I think um, Britt Merrick. And there's like a shaper off, but with a bunch of legends. Rusty has a booth here, Dark Arts has a booth, our boy Brad Floor has a booth. A bunch of legends are in attendance, so I'm gonna go get amongst the action, show you guys some behind the scenes, and then also show you guys our, our talk, which we'll dive deeper into like um, the future for Wavepools, basically the technology behind it, getting into a bunch of details and then talk about how Wavefuls like pretty much jump started my career and like put me on. So don't forget guys, like this video, comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Every like and comment helps. We're just trying to grow. So subscribe, help us out and um, yeah, let's get in here. I don't really know what it's gonna be like, but Jet's so excited, dude. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, it took me just till now to realize you're in a collared shirt. How sick is that? It's like a rare sighting. Pretty insane, huh? Yeah, what up, babe? Hey, Welcome. Official, dude. Yeah. What? Uh, uh, Look at that. Badges and everything. All right, we got our credentials. On the agenda is to corner Tom Lochtefeld, the engineer that I'm speaking with in the Wave Bowls, ask him about the rumored project that I heard from a friend in La Jolla about like a $200 million private Wave Pool building up in NorCal throwing down some crazy shit, so we're gonna try and get the lowdown from him on that. Pick up some surfboards. I got some rusty dark arts for this next contest. And then Britt Merrick's also speaking with me, so I'm gonna try and like arm wrestle him. Maybe Britt Merrick a little bit, and then rouse some guys, and then yeah, just still got some fans with some stickers and fire it up, so let's get in there. All right, we're in there. Whoa, the rusty booth is like front row and center. Are you kidding me? How's it going? Hey. Boom, check it out, dude. Wave pulls, now and in the future, dude. Boardroom talk. That's me, what? But come check out the rough people. Front row, dude, how much did they have to pay for this shit? Are you kidding me? What? Damn, they got some blades, too. What's up, Josh? 
It's my uh, brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. Josh Hall, legendary surfboard trip. What's up, buddy? How are you? Cuz? Good to see you, bro. We're family now. Hi. All right, first task is we're going to the Dark Arts booth. I have two customs for the next wave pull contest coming up. The Rusty Shaped and Dark Arts finished them for me. We're gonna go check them out and then check out a couple other booths. Brad Flores here, Thrashcraft booth. Rusty booth's kind of going off. I already got too swarmed by people. I don't even need to sell the boards. You know, the boards will sell themselves. Rusty's ripped. So let's go check out some other booths. Oh, no way. Shit. Hey, you ain't getting your whoa, board. Whoa, whoa, You're not getting your board back. <laughs> I need that. Dude. There it is. No Check way. it out. What? Wow, this thing feels good, bro. I wasn't going to let you have it. Wow, dude. Check that thing out. Magic. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, let me know where you want me for the photo. Yeah. Got the Dark Arts booth behind us. They got some rusty designs, a couple other boards as well. They've been making some insane technology with the rusty shapes. Super durable and they go insane in the wave pools. And then across, we got Brad Flora, dude, Thrashcraft. Wrote his board when I was in Bali. Cause I broke all my rusties. He's the man, it's just him and his girlfriend running the show, dude. He shapes them, he designs them, he surfs them. He's the man, dude. Brad's punk rock, rip. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Speech? I'm a professional TED talker now. It's lit. What's up, Zeke? How you doing, bro? Good, how are you? Not too bad. What's up, Bradley? Hey, Zeke. What's up, motherfucker? Welcome to the booth, brother. <laughs> Good, Good to, to see, see you. you man. Good to see you carrying it's on the <laughs> trade show legacy with the beers, bro. <laughs> That's what's up. Hey, yeah, the ASR are you days. What's well, good? Uh, just trying to create a safe space here where everybody feels comfortable, you know. Yeah, no boards being broken on the <laughs> beach, like by Will Reed. Guys next door knocked their shit Fucking down. Guys, man. What's up, homies? What's up? Now they're cool though. They got a shape off going on behind us. My cousin in law Josh Hall is shaping it too. A bunch of iconic shapers and up and coming shapers are trying to shape boards and just produce a masterpiece in like I think an hour, which is kind of gnarly. But it's pretty sick. We'll go check out the other shaper too. SDs are the best. Got a rep your city. This is for Zoe McDougal for the next wave pool contest coming up this week. You guys are getting some sneak peek BTS right here. Bro, Zoe's board feels insane. Sorry, Zoe, I might tax this thing.
Thanks everyone for, for coming out. How's the sound? Can you hear me all right? Okay, so what we're doing here is a discussion Q&A with uh, three experts on wave pools. They have very different um, realms of experience within the whole sphere. Britt shapes boards for wave pools. Zeke does incredible errors in wave pools. And then Tom Lochtefeld, he makes the damn things. So <laughs> there's, uh, there, there's a lot of knowledge up here. And uh, yeah, just gonna jump in and, and start out. Um, I, I wanted to ask Zeke, you just, uh, we saw a clip of you in Waco doing a uh, flip, finger flip. You, you want to talk about that and how the wave pool helped uh, or didn't help? For sure, yeah. Uh, that was in 2020. Um, I did like the first ever finger flip in surfing at Waco and it was like a trick that I had been... Uh, dreaming of doing for like years and practicing and just like envisioning and the wave pools really allowed me to like take a trick that I knew in skateboarding and um, practice it over and over again um, that wave pool in Waco is like a skate park and you just get the same section over and over again like a quarter pipe in skateboarding and so it allowed me to kind of just like perfect that trick and eventually like land it um, where in the ocean like every section is different and the wind and just like all the variables like affect it. So that was like something that probably took like 800 tries over like three days and like broke multiple boards. Um, and really had to like find the right technology as like Britt probably knows like some of those epoxy boards went way better in the wave pool. And um, it honestly like kind of jump started my career. I was like a B list or C list pro surfer at that point, like making no money and just doing it for fun. And at that point it kind of just put me on the map during COVID like the WSL events weren't going on and nothing was going on, so that clip went like extremely viral and just blew people's mind that you could do like a kickflip on a surfboard. Yeah. And um, it just like opened my mind to like so many more possibilities, like progressing our sport and also just like events and opportunities um, for the future, really. And now, did you work with the uh, designers of the wave to create that section, or is that already a set section that you just uh, jumped on? Yeah, we actually worked a little bit on that section because I went before the wave pool opened um, and joined a couple guys on like a surfer magazine trip and worked with Shane Magnuson to like make the air section a little better. And that section that I ended up landing a couple of those tricks on was actually a mistake. It was like a, um, they ended up having like pushing out the wrong um, button and a, a wrong little like bulge of whitewash came and it made the best air section um, at the time and that and, was and, and Tom's smiling because he knows exactly what that means <laughs> yeah it was crazy it was like trial and error but like they didn't even mean to send that wave and we were all like that's the one that section's insane and um, we ended up using that for like years to come and then now there's been new sections that have been made um, but yeah that section a we was made like a couple years before that, and then B on that specific trip, I was there with like Josh Kerr, Sierra Kerr, uh, Grayson Fletcher, a couple other pro skateboarders, Katie Simmers, pretty rad crew that like Josh Kerr assembled, and we actually like made a couple changes to the intervals in the wave because we had such a big uh, team surfing. We wanted the intervals to be shorter, and that actually made the section a little better. Like there was almost like a little more bump, and. Um, that epoxy still went pretty good, even with like the chatter from the wave before. Um, but having like reps that quick, like I think it was like 20 second interval we had at which, which like they normally run at like 35 second interval between wave, allowed us to just like get more reps in and just throw like, I don't know, like six different airs within like 10 minutes. So it was, it was pretty special. That trip was pretty memorable. Oh, that's rad. And, and then uh, you mentioned epoxy Brit. Is there, do you find with your, your team riders that they prefer a certain build or a certain style board uh, when they're, they're doing a wave pool session? 
Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's surprising to me when when we first started doing all the wave pool stuff, we thought that epoxy would be the go-to, especially since most of them are fresh water, that it seemed like that was going to be pretty dominant. But there's a fair split between a, a standard PUPE construction and epoxy we find for us, which I think is interesting. I think it comes down to uh, more the board design and making tweaks in that. But I will say, like, for example, at the uh, STAB High contests that happened a few months ago, we won all the divisions in that, and I think all four, and I think three of the surfers were on an epoxy construction, and one was on PU. Okay. What was Aton riding? Aton was riding a spine tech, so that's epoxy with our spine tech construction, uh, neck beard too. And then what are you finding with the uh, construction? Because a lot of the wave pools that Wave Pool Mag will visit, have a rental fleet and typically half the rental fleet is being repaired yeah. because uh, the concrete and wave pools is just so so harsh on surfboards. Um, what have you found as far as construction? Yeah, especially for demo fleets and stuff, uh, durability is a real issue, right? There's a lot of nose and tails and rails and fins that get busted up on the concrete. So we've been experimenting lately with some divinacil on the rails a little harder construction along the rails and reinforcing the fins and stuff like that for demo fleets. Our, our normal like competitive surfers won't do any of that stuff, but for demo fleets you got to up it a bit and that is a thing they're always fixing those. Okay. And when you talk about reinforcing fins, is that a separate foam block or is that uh, like a carbon inlay around the fin box? Ours have mostly been uh, some form of using the resin underneath the fin to reinforce it to kind of like control that torsional thing that happens when they hit the concrete. Okay, and, and what's some of the damage you've seen to boards from, from wave pools? Uh, it's mostly a crushed rail or a chip nose or the tail or the fin if you you know hang on too long, but standard stuff. If you run it up on the rocks at Rincon, it's the same thing, but it just happens more quickly in a wave pool environment. It gets shallow quick, doesn't it? Okay, right on. And then, um, Zeke and, and Tom, I want to go back to you. Like Zeke, you got to work with uh, people having, you know, design waves. Tom, you've been in that situation where you've had surfers come up to you and request something specific. Can you share with us what that experience is like? Like you know the wave pool inside and out, your caissons, um, how they generate waves. Is it? Is it pretty easy for you to do that, or is it, what would be a complicated part of that process, designing a way for someone? There's different elements to uh, creating the wave in terms of wave period, wave height, kind of like interference patterns you create in, in terms of intersections between different wave elements. The other big factor is the currents and how the currents relate to the wave and the timing of multiple waves to allow you to basically clear off or suck out water over the reef and lower the elevation so when the next wave comes it comes in even you know a little more robust and hollow so I think a lot of that is is has been proven to be just, just like to, Jacob was saying, you know, you're out there just testing and, and something happens by mistake and you say, oh, that worked out well. And a lot, a lot of others you do in, you, what we do is we create base models digitally and then use those and it's kind of a whole, there's a whole nother digital world that we interact with. And it's kind of that interface between the digital and the real and then mistakes, so. And, and then for uh, people here who want to know about where, where can someone surf one of your wave pools, because a lot of people know the name, Tom Lockefeld, they know Surf Lock, they know Flow Rider, they know Wave Lock. Palm Springs. Um, yeah, where we got Palm Springs right now. We, there's one in Rotterdam where you know, we met up. And then I have a couple private pools going. And, and the one that'll be happening real soon you know, we'll start construction here in the next probably six months. Is Oceanside, and that'll be a that'll be a insane wave. I think you guys will really like that one. Okay. So we, um, yeah, I met you in uh, Rotterdam just a couple weeks ago 
for the uh, Riften uh, wave pool. And it's if you haven't seen images of it, it's uh, downtown. I think there's one on our video clip. It's uh, right in the center of town, so there are all these tall buildings. On a Sunday afternoon, you're walking through old world Europe, and there are people surfing in the middle of the canal. It's, it's really, really impressive. And Tom, you let me see the uh, engine room and where you do all the, the cooling and everything. And what struck me is that it's very much a reflection of Dutch surfing, like the wave pool, the height of the wave, the way the wave breaks, and a small enclosure. Everyone I was surfing with was really stoked about that. So can, can you speak to wave pools being a reflection of the surf community which uh, surrounds them? Yeah, specific to Rotterdam because they don't have real good waves over there, and to be honest, that wave doesn't, it's not, it's not a really high performance wave. But that was targeted for that audience because that's what they wanted. Likewise, when I built a private pool, you know, the, the owner didn't want this macking just death slab. He wanted something real easy because he wanted it for his kids. So it all depends on kind of who your, who your particular audience is. And I think we'll find that that'll be a lot broader spectrum as the, say, the, the sport the sport and the technology evolves, it'll, it will be able to tailor make waves and pools to, you know, people like Jacob Scalber and, you know, likewise for more beginners. So I think it's going to broaden the whole opportunity. And then, um, Jacob, I want, if you could run off, what, what wave pools have you surfed? Um, I've surfed Kelly Slater's wave pool in the more I've surfed um, the Wave Garden technology in South Korea, the Wave Garden technology in um, Sydney, Australia, the Wave Garden technology in the Basque Country, um, Waco, Texas, um, also Japan. been to the Palm Springs Wave Pool, but unfortunately I was injured, so I didn't get to surf it. It looks insane though, and uh, a couple of my friends have gone in the last couple of weeks and had uh, plenty of fun. Um, and then I've gotten to serve a couple other wave pools that are like standing river waves and um, like the technology he had in Mission Beach um, that was like a flow rider. Um, might be a couple more I'm blanking on. Japan? Oh yeah, Japan for Stab High, see? And uh, what other, oh, New York City, or technically it's in New Jersey, but the inland um, of New York City wave pool that's at um, Scoot and Surf and American Dream Mall. Yeah, the yeah. indoor mall. That yeah. one was crazy and pretty yeah. insane. Yeah, great crew. It's a really short wave. They have really yeah. big space, but they definitely make the best of it. Hundred percent. That and one's then, pretty cool. Okay, and then we'll get you to Munich next. Yeah. Because that wave looks insane. Yeah, that place looks insane. It'd be pretty <laughs> epic. Yeah, it's cool seeing these wave pools pop up like all over the place. Like, I'm actually flying to. Texas on Monday for an event at Waco where a couple of Brits team riders will be competing as well and um, that event's really special because there's going to be surfing and skateboarding. Uh, they built skate ramps like right on the edge of the wave pool and to see like an event just like push the progression of both sports and have like a rad audience and just like an expression session format it's going to be pretty sick to see people just blow minds and like try and push the limits of our sport try new tricks and kind of just bring that aspect of like skating to surfing that I love where you're just like pushing each other and just like get it you got it like try that trick or go bigger or like spin more like doing 720 or whatever it may be like skaters kind of just like push you to go harder and um, that's kind of the aspect that I felt in the wave pools versus like surfing in the ocean it's kind of like a selfish pursuit of like glory there's only one person that's going to get the wave of the day but in the wave pools it's like everybody's going to get the same wave and everyone's going to be stoked and Everyone's going to have the same opportunity, so I'm excited for that event this week. And we, we've talked a little bit about the uh, high performance end, which is most of the <clears throat> digital media we consume, uh, about wave pools. And then we've got uh, a great clip of Mikey February on, on bridge shapes. Um, were you, I mean, that's, that's a fish. That's a, everyone else you shape for is high performance. Thrusters. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, 
Mikey's, Mikey's choice for the wave pool? And yeah, <clears throat> been working on this fish with Mikey for the last year or so. We're actually just launching it today. It's the official launch date here at the show. And uh, it's a high performance fish. So it's got sort of traditional aesthetic and feel to it. You know, it's got a down rail and a super flat deck. But Mikey's been really helpful sort of elevating the performance of it. If you see Mikey surf, it's a beautiful thing. And he draws kind of classic traditional lines and then does something really performance oriented. So he was riding um, a few different boards in that clip, but he's got a Stringer EPS one that he was on. And then also our Spine Tech construction with EPS once again. And he'll just ride the, the same board that he's riding in the ocean, he'll take to the pool. A lot of times I advise my surfers to go an inch shorter in pools because it's just a tighter space. Everything's more compact. The, the pocket is tighter and real cuppy. So I feel like taking an inch off the board helps to fit in the spaces. But Mikey's so versatile that he'll just take what he's riding in the ocean and go to the pool. And it looks like it was just made for it. Yeah, no, I saw the um, when they built the pool and they were testing it, uh, the engineer created a like fat wall to it which uh, they did for you in Sydney as well, for you and Josh. But um, it seemed tailor-made for his surfing, just to, just to carve off that. Yeah, he's got that big swoop. And then when the air section comes, you know, he does some insane airs too. But uh, I was actually pleased watching that fish in the pool. It looked really good under Mikey's feet, and it looks like it translated and kind of fit into the curves. And That's awesome. So I, before we turn it over to questions, I wanted to ask... Uh, well, Jacob had mentioned that the vibe is really great in wave pools. Everyone's taking their turns. No one's, you know, misbehaving. <laughs> Almost no one. Almost no one. <laughs> um, at, at Kelly's wave pool, there's some misbehaving on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you experience at Kelly's? Oh, man, guys love to poach on the end section, you know, or right in the middle of it. And so you're coming down the line. Yeah, they'll chandelier you, or you can just feel the vibe of them praying for you to fall. And you're just like, oh, oh, and they almost will you to fall off so they can poach your wave. Or they're on the ski right behind you, yeah. right? And they're just like shouting at you, and it, it gets pretty hectic. Yeah. I'm going to the uh, Abu Dhabi wave pool at the end of the month for the first time, so I'm looking forward to experiencing that one. So other than Kelly's wave, um, I'd like to talk about community. We'd hit more with uh, Rotterdam, how that's really sprung up and become a, a, a surf thing for the people of Rotterdam <clears throat> and the Dutch surfers. Tom, have you noticed in any of your pools, like what's, what's organically grown around them? I think the one that best demonstrates, it's, it's more of a re, rehab. It's because these pools are very high energy centers and they attract a lot of attention. So, for example, in Rotterdam, you know, people on their lunch break just come out and there'd be thousands of people lining around the pool. And so what's happening is they're now developing, you know, more restaurants, more retail, and the whole lifestyle that just surrounds the culture. So it is, it's real interesting to watch. And if you kind of thought, you know, over my lifetime, I can see we're really good surf spots, you know, in the middle of nowhere. You know, take Jeffrey's Bay or, or you know, go down to places and, you know, you know, Tavaru, et cetera. It creates, it, like, this ecotourism that evolves around surfing. And so now you're going to get these pools that are built in the middle of, you know, the country, and they'll evolve their own, call it lifestyle and culture and, They'll end up being different surfers too, with different, you know, focuses, and it won't be like the ocean. And that it's what happens, you know. It's kind of like an evolutionary process. So you just watch it and and learn. The vibe that they've built at Palm Springs is pretty sick too, because like I got to watch my friends like two hours inland, twelve of them in the water, like sharing waves that were way better than any wave up the coast of California like a couple weeks ago. It's like a flat spell in California. These guys are riding like head high sick waves trading off and like people are standing on the ledge watching everyone's like drinking cruising eating food and then they playing music and there's like these big screens it's kind of just like the vibe that like i always thought of surfing having fun with your friends and like it's a good nothing but a good time and then especially seeing the vibe at like stab high in japan it was like a stadium like what i always dreamed of as like a kid like competing in like a stadium or like 
at like the Olympic level, like there was like 3,000 people at Stab High Japan up on the scaffolding and on the wall and tons of surfers lined up on the beach and every, you could hear everyone scream when you landed a trick or like, oh, if you fell, it was just like a pretty cool vibe and like a rad atmosphere. Cool. Yeah, the Melbourne one's a pretty good example of community there, right? Because a lot of people that work in Melbourne that maybe grew up closer to the coast surfing and stuff, and now they've got this opportunity. I, I've been there a bunch of times, and they just come right after work, and they've got their time slot, and their board's ready to go, and it's like a quick after work workout session, and there's a lot of, there's restaurants and bars there, and it's a really good community vibe. Everyone's there with their wives and kids, and I, I love the idea of like, Okay, I know when I get off work at five, I'm gonna go get waves guaranteed. I guarantee I'm gonna catch 12 waves, and it, it's pretty cool. There's a good community around that one. Yeah, if, if you haven't seen it, uh, Melbourne and even Sydney to some extent, as soon as the um, tradies get off work at like four, there's everyone's changing in the parking lot. It looks just like a, a beach parking lot, and everyone's uh, jumping in and going surfing. And then, uh, Brett, I wanted to ask you about. Um, using wave pools for equipment testing. There's, um, I know Future Fins and some other companies are using RFD modeling with their products. Are you are you going high tech like, like that with research? Yeah, I mean, uh, high tech and surfboards is always an interesting discussion. But for me more, it's been design elements. So the repeatability of a wave pool has been great, right? I'll go with a couple team riders and a few different boards and you learn so much so quickly because it might take them weeks in normal surf to really feel out of board or what this little tail flip that I added is doing or how I move the fins and in a wave pool you figure it out in an hour session so I've learned a bunch design wise at wave pools on a much more accelerated timeline than I could have in the ocean so sometimes we'll just do strategic hits we've got certain designs and riders and we'll just go and we'll get a few hours and learn more in a few hours than I could learn, honestly, in a year in Santa Barbara. Um, Tom, did you want to add anything to the discussion before we turn it over to, to questions? No. <laughs> <laughs> Zeke. Uh, I, guess I, would just, I guess I would just say there's like a pretty cool aspect of community and um, like examples of amazing opportunities for surfers at every wave pool I've been to, like Waco, Texas. There's individuals that have never even surfed in the ocean, but yet they're like throwing airs and ripping turns and just have this sport that is like pure and wholesome and they love and it's like an outlet and they're so far away from any body of water. So it's pretty cool seeing those kids like year after year, I come back to Waco and seeing kids that are in the heart of Texas in the middle of nowhere, surfing and loving it and have this like passion that they never had before because Waco is pretty uh pretty deserted pretty empty there's like a skate park and I don't even know what else you could do in Waco so I've seen pretty cool aspects of like um just pros and not many cons to the wave pools in every single setting and every place I've been it's pretty rad we're, we're still kind of waiting though for the North Shore remember the movie North Shore yeah. like that was so ahead of its time right Arizona yeah yeah Phoenix is opening oh yeah in it the is. next couple weeks, we're, we're supposed to go out there oh, and unreal. check it out. But we could have a real live Rick Kane. Yeah, I mean, Rick Kane wins that contest, goes Arizona. to the North Shore, and like makes a name for himself. We're still waiting for that to happen, but it's going to happen, right? Sure, Someone's yeah, going to come out of the pool, and suddenly they're on the CT, like killing it. It'd be sick. But how ahead of its time was North Shore? Pretty spot on, too. It's going to happen. Still the best movie ever. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing how the kind of cults. Uh, has built up around that movie. Just people yeah, they, just they actually filmed the original footage for the surfing was in the historic Palm Springs pool, even though the, yes. the pool out in uh, Arizona was the one that they had. The, so they filmed it in the Palm Springs? The kind of surfing part of it. Okay, and that yeah. was at Wild Water where yeah, what, Palm Springs called? Surf Club is now? Oasis, I think it was called okay. the Oasis Water okay. Park. Okay, the Oasis yeah. Water Park. Okay, any other wave pool history questions for Tom? Yeah, deep water standing wave, and uh, they have a smaller footprint, so a lot of parks like to put them in. Arizona is going to have one, a unit pool right next to their traveling wave uh, technology. And then um, Tom, 
So you're you're perfect for this. Deep water standing waves. Yeah, I mean, there's a in the physics of flowing water, there is a distinction between what I originally focused on, which is the thin sheet flow, and that was really a function of uh, economics and and trying to get it to be the least energy because then there was less water moving and the market wasn't ready for the thicker flows so to speak because that just cost a lot more to pump that water and the other big difference is the there's a combination of the boundary layer effect and then the reactive force of a planing body which is your surfboard relative to its as it moves through the water it there's call it react reactionary forces that that come off the board and that affect the bottom. So when you're on a the differential between the thickness of the flow, the board width, the, the speed, all that stuff has an effect. And so there's different elements that kind of interplay. It's kind of like an airplane with the ground effect, you know, as it starts to land. So there's different elements that you can really get lost in and have a lot of fun with. Right on. Any, anyone else? Yes. Yeah, do you want to grab the mic? I'm a quiet speaker. Hi. Uh, my question was on the LA um, Olympics coming up soon. And like having seen the Tahiti experience, do you think the sport would benefit it from being in a wave pool? Um, maybe the Palm Springs or different kind of locations? Or do we focus on like the Huntington or Trestles? Or what would you think from your perspective? I would say there's arguments for both. There's so many like um, core surfers that don't want to take it away from like the natural aspect of surfing in the ocean. But at the same time, like if it's dead flat for the waiting period of the Olympics, it'd be nice to have like a backup plan of a wave pool because you want to showcase the surfer's abilities. And that's kind of what the wave pools allow, like watching the event in Japan and other events at Waco. It really lets surfers like showcase the best of their ability in like a stadium environment. And if you're doing it at like L.A. or Huntington or Lowers, I don't even know if people would really be able to see the surfers that well because it's so far away and it would be so crowded. Versus like at a wave pool, you could have people on scaffoldings and it'd be like lined up so perfectly. So I um, think there's pros and cons to both, but I've definitely heard people care more about it being in the ocean. I, I think there's definitely a need in Olympic surfing to sort of level the playing field a bit. You know, surfing doesn't quite work in the Olympics at this moment in my mind. And a lot of that has to do with nature. And, you know, if you watch the event at Chopu, like sometimes the waves were amazing, sometimes they were terrible. And so I think it would behoove the sport in that setting to level the playing field so everyone gets the same wave. And as Zeke was saying, that allows you to sort of showcase your surfing. And it, it, it changes the sport to a degree because it takes out that variable, which is really what makes surf contests in general exciting, right? If we're watching a surf contest at Pipeline, like it's really exciting when a set comes in and the person's got priority and they're going to get that sick one at backdoor. That's a huge part of the sport, but it doesn't quite translate yet to the Olympic format. So I think that a, a wave pool would help that and probably in the general public's eye, maybe progress it a bit in their mind as far as being an Olympic sport. Unless you can always score a wave like Chopu or Pipe or something like that. But yeah, pros and cons, like Zeke said. And not to go too far into the weeds, but my understanding was that with the uh, surfing through WSL and every other form is in the ocean. So putting it in a wave pool would create a new kind of sport. It would, it would be very, very different. Um, Evan used to work for the ISA, so he knows a lot about the relationship between surfing and, um, and Olympic qualifications. So. Exactly. From a marketing perspective, would it be better to have like surf contests or like the Olympics on like a set date where you can kind of plan ahead of time and also like set up to film the wave like in a, I don't know, like professional way, like bring your production value up? Like I've always been curious oh, yeah, about that. Yeah, definitely. I think it would be e uh, better for the, the sport in terms of presenting it, but how would you qualify the, the team? Definitely be a bunch of variables to that. 
Stab High. Qualify for the Olympics through Stab High. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> sick for sure. Okay, um, any other questions? Yes, Evan. I'll ask you on the mic. This is for Britt. With all of the wave pools doing these bulk purchases of boards, I'm curious if that makes a significant amount of your sales. And if so, do you forecast that into your business model in the years coming? Like, is that going to be significant? Yeah, that's a great question. It has not been significant yet, um, but we have sort of thought for years that it would be, and I'm sure it'll get to that place. We've been working on a few things in other countries to uh, supply a bunch of pools with demo fleets and new boards and do retail outlets and stuff like that. It hasn't materialized in a way yet that's really significantly affected our top line, but we do expect that it would. I want to be there. I also want to figure out how to get invited to one of these private pools that Tom's involved with. <laughs> As a side note, three one eight zero six six eight. That's my phone number. <laughs> so from the from the editor's desk perspective, we get lots of uh, promotional emails from salespeople, and it seems like right now everybody is coming up with the Wave Pool Perfect uh, rental fleet, and that runs everything from like the LibTech heavy duty not as performance oriented type of model to some some designs it looks like they just put a carbon stringer down the center so it's you're you got a lot of company Brett. <laughs> okay uh, anyone else yes so um i have lots of questions for all of you guys but I'm not going to do them all today but uh Having known Tom, Tom for many years, seen you at our locals, um, I'd be curious, obviously we're talking about wave pools now, but I'm really interested in your history and origins from your beginnings, because I understand, and I could be wrong, that maybe your beginnings also had to do with like the creation of water slides, raging waters, and that part of it. So what got you to that point where you were then in the wave pool design, having been one of the first person to, as we spoke about, ride the brutal Bruticus Maximus and go around that corner and be stuck at the grate and pulled off the bottom, if anybody remembers that one, so. Great question. Yeah, just real quick, because that could, you know, there's quite a history there, but I think the thing that motivated me the most was when, when you uh, get in a barrel and it's kind of like this dance of lightness, you know, where you, it's so fleeting and so ephemeral that you want to repeat it and you don't remember it. And, and so at least for me at the time, it was like wanting to capture that memory and that experience and share it. So it was uh, a real driver you know, and, and really motivated me. I, I remember I, you know, when I sold off all the, I had all the Raging Waters parks, I sold those off and I spent like three years just sitting there developing, you know, like the whole flow rider concept because trying to make something that would work in a water park environment, because I knew business wise that was logical. And so trying to make it small and, you know, reduce the capital cost because sir unfortunately at the time even though i was hardcore surfer i i knew that it wasn't realistic to build a surf pool it took so many years and everything had evolved with the entire industry to be able to get to the point where it, it could ever even happen and luckily you know kelly came out and the, you know wave garden guys and you know bruce over at american waves and you know we all kind of pushed and now here's where we are and I think it's really going to go from there. That's, a, that's awesome. Thank you, Tom. We have time for one more question. We, um, yes. Well, I, yeah, I was out there at the, lake, uh, the Lazy River. I love it. Are we going to have that uh, Pike Springs? <laughs> so at Palm Springs, can you tell us about uh, you got a Lazy River there? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Did you, well, no, the water park's still there. Everything. Okay. Still kind of function, although the main attraction is the. Did you the surf did you do any design with the Lazy River or other Actually, water attractions, Tom? I did, but all in. Uh, I worked. I designed with uh, Jeff Henry, in Schlitterbahn, you know that whole action surf wave river, and we built the first one in Dubai at the Wild Wadi. Um, that's the one that has a big surge of water that goes all around the pool. You could surf, we were, I was in Texas surfing that thing around. And we built that first one. God, that was like 20 years ago. But, but there's, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, stuff. <laughs> right on. Well, I, I want to thank our guests for uh, taking time out. Uh, sharing their knowledge. We have to get off the stage now, but uh, they're around if you want to ask questions, especially Britt about surfboards. <laughs> track him down. Thank you. He's not busy enough. Hi, right, Tony. Much love. I'm going to go surf. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, okay. And uh, I'll give you some feedback. I'll oh, text good. you, JT. Nice. I'm going to ride one of them before I bail. Cool. Thanks, bro. Thank Appreciate you. you. I got the boards, I feel mental. Um, we're kind of cutting the trade show short. We're gonna go surf, so uh, say later to a couple peeps and uh, pack up the car and then on to the next, so stay tuned. I'm gonna go surf. I'll be back OTC. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Jake is, Zeke is leaving. I'll the be back, man. 2024. I'll be back. It's Zeke, not over yet. The local boy, the local show, local reps, Put everything for local. SD, Medusa dude. wetsuits, rusty surfboards, born and raised. Look at that thing. Oh my God! It's like Ben Gray. Magic. You're magic. the cook of the week, not not Zeke. <laughs> it's magic. Much love, bro. I'll see you in a little bit. We'll be back. We um. Waves are firing, dude. We have a lot to uh, accomplish today. It, well, waves are firing, bro. We got to get after it. But to give you guys a little wrap up and a rundown, um, I didn't quite accomplish my goals. I wanted to hear more about these private wave pools from Tom Lochtefeld, and I guess he signed an NDA, so we couldn't even get a confirmation or a denial about this big Zuckerberg project. I don't even know if he's the engineer behind it or if it's even a real thing, but uh, I'm going to go on a limb and say, yeah, it's going down. So. You heard it here first, folks. Zuck, $250 million wave pool, something of that matter. Coming soon, private. And then, um, Britt's just too cool. He was showing me like hunting shots of him killing like 800 pound elks and shit. So I was kind of scared to arm wrestle him. And then the rest of the booths were pretty rad. Thanks to everybody that came up to us. Had a bunch of fans stoked on like the ferry surfing video. I really appreciate that. It's cool to hear some feedback. And let me know how you guys like this kind of longer form, more raw. Um, just interview style video with that whole talk at the wave pool about the wave pool summit and whatnot and um, stay tuned next couple of videos are gonna be off the chain bro we got some big things in store so much love guys like this video comment down below subscribe to the channel and keep it OTC you